The following program is sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies. Good morning and welcome to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy, a local Health Mart pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. We're glad you joined us this morning. Before we begin, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Merc- Mercy Medical Center. Gosh, can't get that out. Studio Arts and Glass, and of course, our technical producer, J.D. DeAngelis. In the studio with me is Brad White, a compounding pharmacist, and our special guest, registered nurse, David Morris, injury prevention and outreach coordinator for Mercy Trauma Services. Good morning, David. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Good morning to you. It's cold outside, and as we have seen over the past couple of days, winter is finally here. Whether you're taking the kids sled riding, hitting the slopes for fun, or even just clearing your sidewalks, you'll want to consider safety. Some health issues that are at the top of mind include frostbite, hypothermia, concerns with shoveling snow, falling, and others. Today we're going to talk about some of these issues and learning some tips from the trauma experts at Mercy Medical Center and how we can be wise to avoid health risks throughout the next few winter months. We'd like to remind our listeners that today's program is also available on our podcast, which can be downloaded from the App Store on your favorite mobile phone. You can look for Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and listen to any of our programs anytime, anywhere. If you have questions you'd like to ask today, you can post them up on our live Facebook feed, or you can give us a call here at the radio station at 330-450-1480. So, David, uh, tell us about your background and how you got into this and things like that. (laughs) Sure. So, uh, I'm a trauma certified RN. Um, I've worked at Mercy for about 11 years now, a little over 11 years. Um, Started out in the ER as a tech, an ED tech, um, while I was working through nursing school. I graduated nursing school, moved into that sort of area in the emergency department, and job opened up in trauma services. Uh, In June June of last year, 2018, I became the injury prevention outreach coordinator for Mercy, and uh, yeah, here I am. Okay, so so how do you how do you interface with the emergency room? That t- tell me exactly what you do. I guess so. Um, injury prevention outreach. I get that question a lot. Um, when you are a verified trauma center, as many hospitals are, um, you have to do some sort of injury prevention and outreach within the community. So, I guess the simplest way that I can explain my job is I teach people how to not get hurt. Um, I go out, teach a lot of classes in the community, things like fall prevention, um, pedestrian safety and playground safety for children, bike helmets, things like that, uh, distracted driving courses, and so on and so forth. I guess in, in a hospital environment, uh, with sometimes being a lot of rush rush, there, there could be potential for accidents like being run over by a, <laughs> a patient being pushed quickly yeah, definitely. in the emergency room, things like that. So, it's so, hectic. So how do we... How do we control that, I guess? Um, and within the hospital, staying on your toes, um, you know, just being aware of your surroundings and I guess what's I, coming I think at you. And, and I haven't seen this in a while in any, in, in any of the places I've been in, but yeah. there was usually a white line or a red line or a green line or something years ago uh-huh. in, in some of the hospitals. I don't, do we do that anymore? I don't or? think so. I think that's all went away. So. Okay. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I've been around for a while again. <laughs> um, so is your position, your, your physical position, is in the emergency room or do you have an office? Or? So um, when I'm in the hospital, I work in trauma services. So trauma services is a uh, like a, its own separate entity, like the emergency room or the ICU. It's mm-hmm. just a different service line of the hospital. Now, we work very closely with the emergency department just because um, – I mean, all of our patients basically come through the ER at some point in time. But um, trauma services, uh, we provide care specifically for trauma patients, and we follow them throughout their stays. So our job is to, um, you know, look at how the trauma patients were treated from start to finish, uh, improve processes, um, do performance improvement, and just constantly try to provide that best care specifically for the trauma patients that come to Mercy. So a trauma patient is an auto accident patient, uh, an industrial, you know, what would fall in there? So trauma is very broad spectrum. Um, you can kind of classify it as any injury, okay? Yeah. Somebody somebody uh, steps on some a nail, you know, some any penetrating trauma, blunt trauma, sure. 
uh, like you said, the motor vehicle accidents, things like that, gunshot wounds, you know. Okay. Uh, falls. Falls is our number one okay. mechanism of injury, sorry, um, that we see year-round. So. Okay. So maybe help me. Help me understand the difference between is just the trauma center in the emergency department or yeah, together? That I mean, is I'm so, just trying to draw no, the line, okay? No, you are not the only because one. Because I was going to say before the show started that I always thought that the trauma center <laughs> was the ER, but now you're like, no, the yeah. trauma center is not the ER. So. So, so Mercy as a whole is a trauma center, which just means that we are qualified uh, to take care of trauma patients. We have went through a verification process with the American College of Surgeons. Um, they've came looked at our facility, mm -hmm. um, looked at everything that we have to offer, look at how we care for the patients, and have verified us as a trauma center. So we're not a part of the ER trauma services specifically, but the ER is who takes care of our trauma patients, as well as you know wherever they travel after that, ICU, one of the floors, one of the other units, things like that. So we are a trauma center. The ER is a trauma center. However, trauma services, the service line I work in, um, we're not part of the ER necessarily. Okay. Yeah. So, but you're you're qualified to handle some things that maybe the garden variety ER is not. Correct. So exactly. So higher higher risk, higher. Exactly. We are a level two trauma center, um, which just means that we can basically handle any trauma that comes through the door uh, with confidence. Yeah, uh, it, se it seems like on any day that there's an accident on the interstate. Uh -huh. Your ER guys are right there, okay. Yeah. Are, are you the main target for, for, for what happens on the interstate there? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, we're right there off, off 77 sure. and we get a lot of influx from motor vehicle accidents and, you know, gunshot wounds, so. It's Things like that. It's just so. it's so curious. Yes. Like if there's an accident on one side of the interstate, the other side of the interstate slows down. And everybody, <laughs> it's got to be everybody gawking and looking. And oh with, yeah. And then that causes more trouble. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So. All right. So we're here to talk about winter safety. Um, what kind of increases do you see in winter-related injuries during you know December, January, February? So, the most obvious answer is fall fall injuries. Uh, like I said earlier. Fall is our number one mechanism of injury all year round. Um, and that's how it is for pretty much every hospital across the country. It's the number one mechanism of injury. That's why we try so hard to, you know, go out there and do fall prevention and things like that. But fall related stuff like broken wrists, uh, you know, you fall on your outstretched yeah, hands yeah. and things like that. Um, broken arms, <clears throat> broken hips, head injuries, <clears throat> anything like that. So that snow and ice just makes it that much harder to get around and mm. causes that many more falls so mm. just mainly fall injuries and a lot of sickness and things you know like yesterday that. was pr particularly treacherous yes it was very cold I, mean, I kept salting down the driveway and i thought okay it melts for two seconds and then it refreezes <laughs> I could, come on yeah. what is wrong here? <laughs> so well i'll tell you what um it's a constant battle in these in this kind of weather to mm -hmm. keep the parking lots and the you know, snow removal and, and ice and salt and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so I wish you'd come up with a solution for this, for the, <laughs> for the ice. <laughs> level two snow you put that removal. Yeah, put, that, snow put that trauma center on that project, if you would. <laughs> I knew a guy that had a heater, had electric coil in his driveway. I have heard about those. You know, you yeah. turn that switch on and melts it all down, but then what happens when you turn the switch off? It probably refreezes, you know. <laughs> and I assume those come with a hefty price tag. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure yeah. they do too. Somebody I know had, they put a driveway in, they put that well, that cable and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. They had one section of the driveway that didn't work. <laughs> so guess what they had to do? Dig it up. Dig it up. Yeah. Wow. So, there are caveats here, so... So, what can listeners do to prevent falls from, from snow and ice? I, I mean, ca being cautioned, of course, is the is the real thing. Because I put my boots on yesterday. Hey, I'm sliding. Yeah. I looked at the bottom of my boots. There's no tread left because <clears> I've <throat> used them for about 16 winters. Yep. You know. So. Yeah, that is uh, like you said, that is the number one thing. A lot of times, especially in today, everybody's in a rush to get everywhere, yeah. get everything done. So, take your time. Please slow down. Um, as far as outdoors, you know, make sure you're keeping those walkways and driveways free of ice yeah. and snow. If you have, if you can shovel it yourself, great. 
if you're not physically able to do so, you know, try to find a family member, a friend, a neighbor to help you out. But try to keep those free and clear of any snow or ice. Mm -hmm. um, and like you said, pick the right shoes for the weather. Okay. Um, if you're going out and you have winter boots, please wear them. Uh, bring bring the shoes that you plan on wearing sure. Spare, to work yeah. with you. You know, sure. So you can put them on when you get there. But have have the right shoes for the weather. You know, I had a lady customer step up to me yesterday in one of our stores, and I said, "You know, she says there's a little ice outside." She says, "I'm walking with a cane," and I said, "I know." I said, "You know, this was a sort of a snap uh, snowfall on us here, you yeah. know." And, and so our, our our client that you know does our lots comes by and does everybody quickly just to get the snow out of the way. So it's mm -hmm. kind of hard on occasion to. But we have salt in all our stores, on lots of it. You know, we can fix those spots in no time. Good. So. A lot of businesses don't do that, so treacherous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One of the things I find interesting too, when you're out and about, you know, is to be prepared. So you mentioned when you go out, wear your boots. Mm -hmm. But you know, the people that drive around and don't have a winter coat, or yeah, yeah. You, you know, I, I guess I feel like if it can happen, it will. At least I feel like that to me. So yeah. if I go out somewhere and I don't have a coat, what if your car breaks down? You know, you put yourself at risk for no reason. Blanket. Exactly. Have a blanket in the car. Yeah. Things like that. Yeah, definitely, you know, prepare, be prepared for those situations. You never know if you're going to break down on the side of a road. Um, always great to have things like a first aid kit, emergency blankets, right. maybe even like, you know, a pack of bottles of water. Yeah, and a snack, um, and a snack or something. Yeah, or exactly. Food, you know, so you, you so read these stories over and over again. Really. You never know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I certainly don't ever plan for it. No, no, not at all. Okay, first breaks here. Listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. Hi, this is Brad White, your Medicine Center Pharmacist. Are you paying big bucks for a little blue Viagra pill? There's a better alternative. Starting at only $4 per dose with a prescription from your doctor, the Medicine Center Pharmacy can prepare a Sildenafil or Tedenafil tablet that melts in your mouth for an affordable price. This allows you to take care of business and still have money left over for dinner and a movie. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4466 for more information. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. Brighten your day with beautiful stained glass from Studio Arts and Glass. Let the sun shine in through a stunning beveled glass window that forms a rainbow on your walls. Commission a piece of art to cherish for years. All at Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, or shop online at StudioArtsAndGlass.com. That's StudioArtsAndGlass.com. We're having a New Year's toy special at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. 40% off all toys. This includes toys of all ages, stuffed animals, toddler sets, Legos, Star Wars, and more. We must move our remaining toy inventory to make room for a new shipment. You'll also find all remaining Christmas decor is discounted an extra 50% off. Come visit us at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville for our toy sale and get the deals before they're gone. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for pictures or visit halfoffhotbuy.com.
Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Today we're talking about winter safety with David Morris, Injury Prevention and Outreach Coordinator from Mercy Trauma Services. Have a question, post it on our live Facebook feed or call us at 330-450-1480. All right, so we're talking about being prepared for the cold weather and maybe expecting the unexpected and... We kind of commented on being smart when you go out and drive around. What about other winter emergencies? Um, you know, blizzards happen. It's been a while here in Ohio. But what about power outages? Or what can we do at home to ensure we're more prepared <coughs> for the unexpected to be safe? Sure. So first and foremost, stay warm. Um, you know, keep keep things like the first aid kit, like like we were talking about with the cars. Keep things like first aid kit available emergency blankets make sure you have extra water extra you know canned goods things like that things that keep well in the pantry Um, emergency flashlights and one thing that some people don't think about is maybe have one of those like external batteries uh, to charge your cell phone that way you can keep in contact with friends family uh, call police and fire if you need to so those are just always good things to have the, the interesting thing they said and probably everybody's heard about the, the boy driving a car into the lake accidentally mm-hmm. up, in, up near Cleveland and the interesting thing was was they went through the new the news went through okay his windows locked up on him because the power mm-hmm. oh wow and um, I think they said the door locks mm-hmm. and all that sort of thing <clears throat> and a couple other things so it shorted out yeah it shorted shame. everything out and, wow. and apparently they said it was he was fortunate um, that the driver's side window was somewhat defective, so he was able to smash it out with his elbow. I can't imagine what his elbow. Well, that was. probably took a lot of force Boy, because those window breaker but, tools are. But but you know they do yeah. have those pretty uh, heavy duty those things. Uh, I've got actually one in my truck uh, that, that cracks a window yeah. real quick. Uh, I don't know what they call them, um, but there's a fair amount of people that end up in the water. Yeah, uh, and that kills every electronic device in the car. And so few cars anymore do not uh, uh, have manual, you know, windows and locks and whatnot. Yeah. You know, open right. door and stuff. So, like yeah, that. one of those glass breakers might <clears throat> yeah might exactly. be good. I don't know what they cost. It was a gift. <clears throat> I think it's so. just. I think they're fairly cheap. Yeah, they got a little real sharp point on the. Yeah, and a lot of them have seat belt cutters as like well. Yeah. Almost like a wrench or something. Yeah. Like about this long, so. <laughs> but but I look at that every once in a while when you see something like this where this boy goes and slides into the lake. Wow. Well, you know there was an accident down in New Philadelphia years ago where the car went into the river and they couldn't. It looked well, like they, well, the, they, one of those. They, they the kid couldn't died. Find, they couldn't they find couldn't the get, patient. They couldn't find the person driving the car. Yeah. So they couldn't so, get them, allegedly couldn't get the doors open. So it is scary. It happens in this area. I mean, yeah. Hmm. The Tuscarawas River down that way can fill up with water. Mm-hmm. You, you know, yeah, it's moving like fast. Full, so. What about keeping warm at home? You know, okay, your power goes out and it's ten degrees outside. What do you do? Um, dress in layers. That's the best thing that I could tell people whenever that happens. So, you know, you ha- if you have those emergency br- blankets, great. Uh, those are so fantastic. You know, those are like space age materials. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, reflective blankets. Those retain body heat like crazy. Hmm. Um, those are great, great things to keep warm. If you have a fireplace, obviously use it. But if you don't, again, dress in layers. Um, a lot of people think, you know, I'm going to dress in layers because I need to put more clothes on to keep warm. But it's actually the air in between all those layers that buffer that cold. Hmm. So, you know, that's why you're told to do it. It's not just putting extra stuff on your on yourself. It's uh, that air in between to buffer that cold. So layers are phenomenal. Unrelated, but related is that the water, you know, it could freeze, pipes freeze, you know, if it's mm-hmm. an extended period of time. So that would be something that we ought to keep in the back of our head, too, yeah. if we haven't extended, you know, mm-hmm. uh, no power times. So. Mm-hmm. Okay, what about carbon monoxide? So I'm thinking, um, okay, the power goes out, you light candles, or you just mentioned you build a fire. Mm-hmm. How do you be safe and make sure you don't uh, get exposed to smoke inhalation? So carbon monoxide uh, itself is. A little scary um, only because you don't know that you're being exposed to it really until you start having symptoms like nausea vomiting headaches um, things like that so if you have a whole household full of people experiencing the same symptoms please seek medical attention Um, but you know it's gonna be hard because like I said you don't know however you know if you have a working CO detector fantastic 
Um, I don't think they're that expensive. Make sure it has good batteries, yeah. things like that. So. I think the city of Canton just made those mandatory Did they? in rental properties. Oh, that's fantastic. And we, had a, we had a staff member um, about three years ago whose furnace was defective. Yeah. They, their, their dog died, I think, near the furnace. It's and awful. Fortunately, the, you know, I don't know exactly how they did uh-huh. not you know, get affected. Right. But uh, fortunately, they, you know, they both lived. So. Yeah, good. Hmm. Well. All right, so we're, we talked about risks inside. What about um, What about doing the fun stuff outside? You know, whether <laughs> you're, you know, I feel like every year you hear about some kid sledding and they hit a tree. Yeah. Or if you're skiing and you get hurt. Um what about precautions even just to make sure, um, you know, we talk in the summer about wearing sunscreen and watching mm-hmm. your sun exposure. What about cold weather exposure and what's a realistic expectation when you're out there having fun and maybe you're not paying attention to the finer things? Sure. So, um, you know, if you're doing any winter sports, obviously I have to advocate for wearing a helmet and pads if you can. Um, but just talking about staying safe from the cold, like I said, layer up, you know, Keep those layers on. Uh, have your base layer. Have your you know in between layer. Have your extra layer. Then put a jacket over top of all that. Um, dress appropriately. Um, wear that jacket. Wear your winter gloves. Make sure you're wearing your winter hat. A lot of heat escapes through your head. And a nice pair of socks. A good warm pair of socks. It's quite nice. So uh, always have those things. If you have those hot pockets. Have you, have, or the hot yeah, those hands. Are cool. Have you seen yeah, those? Yeah, they really are cool. You know, you can just crack them open yeah. or whatever. Um, those are great to have. Yeah. Um, just make sure if you have thin skin, don't leave them in the same place for too long because oh. they do get pretty hot. Yeah, they do. So those are those are always nice to have, though. I handed those Quick out. Warm up. Handed those out at a baseball game we went to a couple years ago. Yeah. Opening day or something. You're probably everyone's favorite person. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I brought them because this is going to be a cold day. You know, yeah. I've been in this stadium before when it's warm, but not when it's cold. So. <laughs> but they were thrilled about it. So. Yeah. Those are great. Okay. Bottom of the hour. Time for the news. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. This is Brad White from the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Perhaps you've gotten the urge to venture outside and clean up the garage or do some yard work, resulting in muscle aches and pains. If you have sore muscles or aching joints, you may want to consider a prescription pain-relieving cream available with a prescription at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our pharmacists can work with you and your physician to get topical pain creams that can be rubbed directly on the source, reducing inflammation and pain. Topical creams avoid troublesome side effects and dependency issues that can be caused by oral medications. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has an accredited compounding laboratory, and it is your source for custom medications. Custom compounded pain-relieving creams, available only at the Medicine Center Pharmacy, where wellness begins. Visit us at MedShopRx.com for the pharmacy nearest you. That's MedShopRx.com. We're having a New Year's toy special at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. Forty percent off all toys. This includes toys of all ages, stuffed animals, toddler sets, Legos, Star Wars, and more. We must move our remaining toy inventory to make room for a new shipment. You'll also find all remaining Christmas decor is discounted an extra fifty percent off. Come visit us at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville for our toy sale and get the deals before they're gone. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for pictures or visit halfoffhotbuy.com. Brighten your day with beautiful stained glass from Studio Arts and Glass. 
Let the sun shine in through a stunning beveled glass window that forms a rainbow on your walls. Commission a piece of art to cherish for years. All at Studio Arts and Glass on Apple Grove and 77 in North Canton. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 to 6, or shop online at studioartsandglass.com. That's studioartsandglass.com. When we hear the word pharmacy, we think prescriptions, right? Hi, Paul White for the Medicine Center Pharmacies in Stark and Tuscarawas Counties, a locally owned Health Mart pharmacy. Of course we carry prescriptions, but our stores carry way more than that. We have a large selection of ostomy and diabetic supplies and compression socks. All of our pharmacies carry a variety of canes, walkers, bath seats, rollators, and commodes, all at super low prices. Our rollators are only $69.95. Call or stop by our local medicine center pharmacies in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia. Health Mart, caring for you and about you. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your host and pharmacist, Paul White. Today we're talking about winter safety with David Morris, Injury Prevention and Outreach Coordinator from Mercy Trauma Services. We've got a lot more to cover this morning, so let's get back to the show. Um, We talked a little bit about this car safety and things like that, but, you you know, when you jump in your car and you're going to drive to Montana or something like that, I mean, Mm -hmm. you really got to have some stuff. Um, because you're going to be out in the middle of nowhere, uh, you, you know, a lot of that drive. Mm-hmm. So what about that situation? So um, when you're traveling, you know, long distance, I guess I guess any distance. Um, so we talked about the whole safety thing with the first sure. aid, emergency blankets, water, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, if you're planning on driving, especially in the winter when it's slick out, you know, the ice and snow, please, please keep your eyes on the road. Um, distracted driving is just becoming more more of a problem um, with cell phones and things like that. Uh, I know it's difficult, but please put the phone down. Um, slow down as well. Uh, you know, it's slick out there. Make sure you're leaving plenty of room to stop. Um, give yourself some extra room to stop. So keep that distance from cars. Keep the distance from other people around you if you can. Just black, easy black, things. Black ice is always the, you know. Yeah, you're, you never know if it'll... We have a lot of, a lot of, a lot of roads in the county and the city that have been repaved mm-hmm. you know in the last few months and, and uh they had a much longer paving period of time because of the good weather and man <coughs> are they slippery when they get wetter yeah see, that new so, new stuff so what about vaccines i mean should we have any special winter month vaccine uh for the winter months uh obviously we worry about flu um flu season past couple years has been pretty bad um this year not too horrible um which is good. Uh, the flu vaccine's working. So, um, flu vaccine, uh, anybody, any age over six months, um, recommended for uh, children, the elderly, mostly uh, people with like chronic conditions, like lung conditions, or uh, if somebody's on immunosuppressants. And we still have time like for that. a flu for heavy. Oh yeah, flu, we still have know, time. Yeah, we're still giving flu shots at the Mass Ab- Center Pharmacy. So. Good. You know, we're going to stay as long as we can. So, you yeah, know, you know, plenty of vaccine this year. I think I don't think it's one of those years where we're. Yeah, and I short. think it's I think it's working this yeah. year. I think it must be. Yeah. yeah. Well, after last year, it's a good thing because it was tough here. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> so, what about um, you know, I I kind of feel like we've also been lucky on common cold so far this year. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some good tips, uh, whether you work among a lot of people or you work or live with someone who maybe doesn't have the best immune system to make sure that when you are when you have a cold or you're coughing or sneezing, what are the best practices to uh, contain your virus if you have one? Right. So um, we talk a lot in the hospital about covering your cough, one. Um, best way to do that, if you have a tissue fantastic cough or sneeze into that if you don't we do what's called the vampire cough you remember the old dracula movies where yes. he puts his cape up yeah. here and, <laughs> yeah. the way to do it yeah sure. exactly so uh just coughing into your inner elbow if you if you don't have a tissue on on your or anything like that um but then afterwards it's huge this time of year is washing your hands um proper hand washing is the best thing to stop the spread of infection. You so might have please small, make sure you do that. You might have a small uh, hand sanitizer in your pocket. Yeah, you hand sanitizer it. is awesome to have. Uh, excellent at killing germs. It's very, very convenient. You know, you, like you said, it's just a, you can carry around a small bottle sure. either in your purse or in your pocket, in your car, 
wherever. And, you know, you touch a door or a banister in a public place, especially a doctor's office or a hospital, um, quick squeeze of that, yeah. rub it in until it's dry, and you're good to go. So, yeah, proper hand washing, hand sanitizer. Please, please use them uh, in, this, in these winter months. I see that most restrooms now public, you know, restaurants who seem to have soap and... And hand sanitizer, yeah. All of our facilities have yeah, them. And they're the all over the hospitals, I know that. Yeah, too. everywhere. <laughs> okay. Um, what about... Yeah, no, that's probably not the same. We all know too well that that having the flu is not good. I mean, we're already, we've already seen a few people in our stores, but... Mm -hmm. um, what do we do for these people? Therapy. So for the flu, and, and um, this year's flu symptoms. I yeah, flu symptoms. Um, so we're looking at fever and chills, fever or chills. You know, chills from the fever. Um, usually cough, sore throat, runny or stuffy nose, uh, but kind of a telltale sign to, that differentiates that might tip you off to hey, this might be something more severe, maybe I do have the flu, is you'll usually develop muscle weakness or sore muscles, like muscle joint pain. Um, that's like a telltale sign. I've worked in the ER for many years now, and it's uh, that kind of differentiates it from, you know, you're just run-of-the-mill things. So uh, if you're experiencing any of those, you might want to consider the flu. Can you, would you mind touching on the difference between a gastroenteritis and the true flu? Yeah. So, Is that okay? I mean, because that's, you know, in the pharmacy, we get a lot of people that think they have one thing, but they really have another. Right. And I don't so, know that it really matters, but. Yeah. So um, the flu is a virus. Um, you know, a lot of people come into the ER wanting an antibiotic, and it's not something that we're going to give out for the flu. Um, so some people. Uh, will come away disappointed, but uh, you know, with the flu, you're basically just going to treat the symptoms. Um, you're stay home, rest. Uh, you might not even have any nausea, vomiting with the flu, uh, but it's possible, like you would with like a gastroenteritis or things like that. Um, drink plenty of fluids. Treat the symptoms. Uh, sometimes, if you, whenever the symptoms are very, very bad, you know. Get medical, seek medical attention from your healthcare provider, but um, sometimes Tamiflu is given out uh, yeah. depending on you know where you're at with the flu. Uh, it's possibly been shown to lessen the amount of time and the symptoms that you have, but a lot of times you don't even need it. You just need yeah. to stay home, drink your fluids, rest up, and uh, treat your symptoms. Stay out of the crowds. Yes, stay out of the crowds, yeah. exactly. Probably to be mentioned, too, that if you feel a cold coming on or you feel under the weather, make sure you get adequate rest, too. Yes. You know, don't Lots burn the candle at both ends. Yep. And that only makes it harder on your body to recover. Absolutely. Okay, a scientific question for you here. Yeah. What do we do to, what do we do to uh, boost our immune system? Okay. So, scientific. Um, well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, first and foremost, I, I would say don't smoke. Um, okay. Smoking... Uh, does a number on your immune system plus it kind of kind of paralyzes those little cilia in your lungs that try to okay. work all the bad stuff up and out so you smoking just lets that stuff kind of sit down in there and sure. settle in and get sick so what about, what about let me interrupt you yeah it is all over cable tv radio mm -hmm. the the vaping vaping yes yeah. i can't think of the name of the one that's <laughs> just the jewel pounding yeah the jewel they're pounding yeah. on the <laughs> and then yeah. they say at the end it's, you got to switch to this product and quit smoking cigarettes and then they say at the end well it's got nicotine in it so yep. uh, so <laughs> <Yeah. thinking laughs> i mean what about what about this you're still um you don't have all, as many other carcinogens and things like that whenever you're you know vaping however yeah. you still have nicotine you can still get addicted nicotine is horrible on your vessels uh, especially yeah. the small vessels so um <laughs> obviously it's 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 not good so okay when somebody drives by you and they're vaping in their car and they got their window open i, I, I can't tell if the car's on fire or if it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's this huge blast they, of steam coming out yeah puff of smoke rolling out, out of the windows window and things yeah. Yeah. hey i better stop that car and see if they're okay you know? <laughs> um, 
uh, other than not smoking, make sure you're eating plenty of fruits and vegetables, um, getting those necessary vitamins and minerals to support your immune system. Um, if you drink alcohol, only do it in moderation. And like you said, get plenty of rest and try to minimize stress. Stress is, you know, a lot of people don't realize what a number it does on your body, your heart, your mind, things like that. It's not only mental, though. Uh, stress can depress your immune system and make you more susceptible to sickness. So, and I suppose to some extent, some of this is, uh, okay, with flu, people sometimes, and most times, get upset stomach or vomiting or mm -hmm. whatever. Eating greasy, you know, mm -hmm. fatty foods probably would aggravate that to some extent. I would imagine, yeah. So, um, so the diet should be, I don't know what the diet exactly should be, but yeah, um, chicken just soup. Just things that are easy yeah. on. Easy to digest. Yeah, yeah, easy on your stomach. Uh, toast, yeah. crackers, things like that. Not a fried burger or fried no, no, French no. fries. I would or, stay away from those for yeah. the time being. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> from the pharmacy recommendation side, I'd like to touch, too, that, um, you know, a simple vitamin D supplement can also support your immune system. So that's something that, especially living in Ohio in the winter, we don't get a whole lot of sun exposure to get uh, vitamin D production. So don't be afraid to talk to us at the Medicine Center about a recommendation for your particular age or, or, or situation. Um, and even a multivitamin, a simple multivitamin, there is good data to show that um, a patient with diabetes that takes a multivitamin has a 23% less risk of getting the common cold. So if it's going to work for a patient with diabetes, it ought to work for you too. So just simple little things. Um, you know, be conscious of what you put in your mouth and what you put in your body and um, get adequate rest. And the stress thing I think is important you mentioned too because that's something that people don't realize, the power of how... How much stress can affect you? You can think you're not under stress; you're just yeah. busy. But you know what? Don't um, if you're not sleeping well at night. There's probably a stress factor in there too. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned fall prevention earlier in the show, and you know we um, in the pharmacy we've been given more opportunities to do one-on-ones with our patients and discuss their medications and how they work and what they're for, and make sure that they take them and find solutions if they have trouble affording them and things mm -hmm. of that nature. I cannot get over how many patients think it's okay to fall. And I'm just talking in the summer, you know, oh, I'm getting older. I, You yeah. know, when you get older, you fall more. Mm -hmm. Well, and then you think winter and ice and canes, and I'm thinking, oh, yeah. man, this is bad. Yeah. So can you speak to anything else with respect to, um, to fall risks? Uh, um, and I guess I'm thinking about how you set your home up to put yourself at a better odds to not have obstacles or yeah absolutely um so you know we we do teach a we um provide a couple of courses for older adults and things like that for fall prevention um one of them is called matter of balance it is a it's an eight, eight week course um that we offer for free to older adults and it goes over basically kind of the things you said um in home and things like that we we look at your whole environment uh Make sure that your things to remember are just quick little tidbits. Um, keep the floors free of clutter, okay, as much as you can. The less things that you have to trip over, the better. Um, what is things as some, simple as wiping up spills immediately after they happen. Uh, so many people are busy. Whenever they spill something, you know, they're cooking or whatever. Um, wipe them up because a lot of times people forget about them, continue on with what they're doing, and then they turn around and have a fall. Uh, it's even worse in the winter, though, because a lot of people track in snow mm -hmm. with their shoes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they don't realize that that snow melts and their feet go out from under them and they fall. Um, take a look at your, like I said, at your environment. Um, if you have trouble reaching things in certain areas, put them down on a lower shelf. Um, Matter of Balance goes over that. It also teaches a lot of, uh, you know, exercises to strengthen your legs and your ankle muscles, and all those you use for balance. Well, you know, shower rails and all that kind of stuff should be. Grab bars are grab fantastic. Bars, yeah, um, rug stuff. tape, any loose rugs. Yeah, I was thinking rugs even. Uh, yeah, a lot yeah. of people love, you know, those throw rugs and things like that, yeah. but they are fall hazards. They really are. The you, other thing that's useful are grabbers, you know, these extended rods. And yeah. Take something high off the shelf instead of crawling up on the counter. Yeah. Or reaching too far or... Or getting out a ladder, setting on a ladder. Yeah, we have a lot of tools at our disposal nowadays, sure. so please use sure. them. 
Well, in the spirit of tools, yeah, you know, don't be afraid. You know, some some patients tell me they feel it's degrading to need to be told to use a cane or a walker. Yeah. Well, you know what? If you need a cane or a walker, heed that advice because it is designed for your safety, not to make you, not to belittle your situation. You know, they have designer canes, so yes. you know if you want that Ohio State cane, you can have an Ohio <laughs> State cane or whatever. So don't be afraid to use the tools available and keep yourself safe. Yeah. All right, we're going to get our last break in here. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. You're listening to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy and your hosts, pharmacists Paul White and Brad White. Remember, you can get more information right now by visiting MedShopRx.com. That's M-E-D-S-H-O-P-R-X.com. We'll be back with more of Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy in just a moment. With a heart attack, every second counts. Every moment the blood supply to your heart is cut off or reduced leads to heart damage or death. Mercy Medical Center can stop a heart attack in record time. Mercy is the only hospital in the nation that can open a blocked artery right in the ER just minutes after arrival, saving lives and preventing further heart muscle damage. That's because Mercy's Emergency Chest Pain Center was America's first to achieve full accreditation and the first to install a fully functional cardiac catheterization lab just a few steps away from our ER doors. The average time in the U.S. from ER arrival to opening of a blocked heart artery is 64 minutes. At Mercy, thanks to our ER cath lab and the area's most experienced emergency heart care team, it's faster. We're capable of opening a blocked artery in as little as five minutes. If you have heart attack symptoms, get to Mercy. We can stop a heart attack in record time. To learn more, visit cantonmercy.org slash heart. It's that time of the year again when we struggle with dry, chapped skin, and cold and flu. Let, let us help you stay healthy for less at the Medicine Center Pharmacy. Our line of quality choice products include skin cleansers, moisturizers, and cough and cold remedies, all priced much less than the name brand products. As a pharmacist, I can tell you that the quality choice compares to big name products with the same quality and ingredients, but for a much smaller price. You'll save at Medicine Center Pharmacy. Stop by any of our locations in Canton, Louisville, Minerva, and New Philadelphia, or visit us at MedShopRx.com. And this time of the year, if you're spending a lot of time outside in the cold, you need to use lotions, creams, or whatever on your hands, on your face, particularly before you go to bed in the evening. Hi, this is Brad White, your Medicine Center Pharmacist. Are you paying big bucks for a little blue Viagra pill? There's a better alternative. Starting at only $4 per dose with prescription from your doctor, the Medicine Center Pharmacy can prepare a Sildenafil or Tedenafil tablet that melts in your mouth for an affordable price. This allows you to take care of business and still have money left over for dinner and a movie. The Medicine Center Pharmacy has four locations in Stark and Tuscarawas counties. We're here to keep you healthy and save you money. Give us a call at 330-339-4466 for more information. We're having a New Year's toy special at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville. 40% off all toys. This includes toys of all ages, stuffed animals, toddler sets, Legos, Star Wars, and more. We must move our remaining toy inventory to make room for a new shipment. You'll also find all remaining Christmas decor is discounted an extra 50% off. Come visit us at the Half Off and Out by Store in Louisville for our toy sale and get the deals before they're gone. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for pictures or visit halfoffhotbuy.com. Welcome back to Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. I'm your pharmacist, Paul White. Today we're discussing winter safety with David Morris, Injury Prevention and Outreach Coordinator for Mercy Trauma Services. Let's get back to the last segment of the show. All right. Let's talk about um, a program I hear you offer at the schools. It's called uh, something to do with stopping the flow of blood, which <laughs> blood anywhere isn't good. But talk. let's talk about that. And what can you share with our listeners? Sure. So, um... It's actually a program that uh, Mercy has been uh, offering for a long time. We offer it to, it's kind of geared towards large groups or organizations, things like schools, churches, office buildings, and so forth. Um, but it's called Stop the Bleed. Um, kind of a little background. Back in 2012, the Sandy Hook Elementary School incident happened. Um, it was at that time that People sat down, both government and healthcare agencies across the U.S., um, sat down in Hartford, Connecticut, and decided to look into how we save more people whenever these things happen. 
So they dived into the research um, and found out that a lot of people were dying just because they were losing too much blood. So they came up with a list of recommendations. Uh, one of them was to develop a program that will teach basic bleeding control techniques to the general public. Um, and that program is called Stop the Bleed. Uh, we teach three basic bleeding control techniques. We teach direct pressure, um, tourniquet use, and we teach wound packing. Very, very simple stuff that can potentially save lives. And um, doing some really great things within Stark County and even just Northeast Ohio. Um, when I came into the role in June of last year, 2018, um, I wanted to make it a priority to try to get all of our local school districts, uh, their teachers and staff educated um, with this information. Uh, in the state of Georgia, it's already, they passed legislation saying that all their teachers have to be stopped the bleed train. Um, South Carolina just put bleeding control kits in hmm. every classroom. So uh, it's very, it's coming in, it's sweeping the nation. It's a White House initiative. Um, it's a very, very cool program. but. I sent some letters out to the area superintendents and many of them responded very positively. Um, mm -hmm. We're being really proactive with this. Um, so we've already educated six school districts in Stark County. Um, we have more on the books and I'm hoping that uh, anybody who hasn't reached out will. So, so now you provide the kits or? or so we, we don't provide the kits, we um, provide so uh, I organize all the instructors, we bring the materials, it's a totally free class. Yeah. Um, we bring it to the schools, we present the information to um, all the teachers and staff, and then uh, I will work with the whoever, you know, within the school district I need to, uh, if they need help uh, purchasing the yeah. kits or finding, you know, what to put in the kits, where to station them, things like that. So, so, so. what is really in the kit? So in the kit, um, it doesn't have to. It can be as extravagant as you want it to be, obviously. Um, but if you're if you're looking to stay cheap, um, all you basically need is a tourniquet, some wound packing gauze, some gloves, and usually a compression uh, compression bandage, something like okay. an ace wrap or something. So okay, but, it, but in some of those <clears throat> incidents that have happened in the schools, multiple trauma, multiple victims. Correct. Yeah, and that's why um, it's so important to try to get as many people educated as possible. Um, I mean, you can use for the tourniquet, you can use a shirt, you can use a belt, you can use whatever, whatever you got. If you have so many people, that, too many people for one kid, if you will. Right, um, they try to, uh, unless you have adequate training, try not to yeah. use you know something as a homemade tourniquet, uh, just because they're known to fail. Yeah. But you, just as simple as applying direct pressure can do so much good grab the wound yeah there. in that okay. situation so we offer this uh to we've been to schools churches office buildings uh i have a class for the general public if you want to come okay. next month february 11th so okay at mercy it's it's a really cool program it's just so some such easy information to learn that can help you out whenever you have any bleeding situation. Yeah, I'm so, thinking any natural disaster, exactly. um, it's not tornadoes just, or hurricanes or yeah, it's Lord not, knows what else. It's not just <clears throat> you know the big things that we talk about like shootings and bombings and things like that. It's any bleeding injury. Somebody's using a chainsaw wrong at your house. Uh, yeah. You know. <laughs> so oh boy, it's it's really cool though. I'm really happy with the the support that Mercy's given me to take this out there, and um, we're doing some big things with it. I'm really happy the schools are on board. So. Super. Interesting. Yeah. Well, guys, we're out of time, unfortunately. We never have enough time. <laughs> so thank you very much, David. Injury injury Prevention and Outreach Coordinator, David Morris from Mercy Medical Center. We'd like to thank to remind our listeners, if you suspect you have a medical issue, please contact your health care provider. Thanks to Mercy Medical Center, Studio Arts and Glass, and, of course, techno producer, J.D. DeAngelis, as always. We thank our listeners for joining us on Health Matters with the Medicine Center Pharmacy. We are a local health mark pharmacy caring for you and about you. Have a healthy week. We'll see you right here again next Friday at 9 a.m. on News Talk 1480 WHBC. The preceding program was sponsored by the Medicine Center Pharmacies.